This video originally aired on my personal YouTube channel as part of a 20 video series and has since been migrated to the Borland Genetics YouTube channel. As much time has passed since the series aired and DNA technology has developed quickly over the course of the past three years, some of the information contained in this series may be outdated. However, the general concepts explained still apply. Please note that during the migration, the videos lost their 13,000 collective views and unfortunately, their viewer comments as well. Hi, my name is Kevin Borland and uh, welcome to my new video blog about genetic genealogy. The purpose of this blog is going to be to introduce you to some of the tools and techniques available to you after you receive your DNA results from your testing company, whether that be Ancestry.com or 23andMe or FTDNA or one of the others. A lot of the tools I'm going to discuss, such as the ones used in today's pilot episode, are on a software platform called JetMatch, which many of you will likely have heard of. And if you haven't already downloaded your raw DNA from your testing company and uploaded to JetMatch, I strongly encourage you to do so. The tools that the testing companies have for analyzing DNA, they're great, but uh, these tools are like the technology of a car and the suite of advanced tools at JetMatch is much more like flying an airplane. DNA and genetics is a science, so uh, you'll get the most out of your DNA test if you treat it as such and apply scientific method and conduct experiments. And with the tools on JetMatch, you can really conduct more powerful and meaningful experiments uh, than with the basic tools available through the testing companies. But you gotta know how to use it. Well, let's jump into the first topic, which is one way to use the Lazarus tool on JetMatch. Today we're going to reconstruct Aunt Nada. Uh, Nada was actually one of my father's two maternal aunts, so she's my uh, great aunt, and she died long before the availability of uh, DNA testing. As the name of the tool implies, Lazarus is a tool intended for just this very purpose. That is to create a reconstructed DNA kit for a deceased or unknown or otherwise unavailable or unwilling uh, family member. So. To explain the process to you, let's start with uh, what DNA resources we have available for this task. First is my Uncle Michael. He's the son of uh, Nada's sister, my grandmother Helen. Then we have Cousin 1 and Cousin 2, and those are direct descendants of uh, Nada. That's, uh, one is her daughter and one is her granddaughter, one of her other daughter's uh, children. Cousin 1 and Cousin 2 are not mother and child, and that's that's important for this because if, if Cousin 2 was a child, it would be kind of redundant to use that uh, DNA sample for this purpose. It wouldn't hurt your results, it just wouldn't, it would be a waste of time. Uh, then we have Cousin Richard, and he's a son of Nada's other sister, Sally. And both my brother and I have also tested, and uh, information from our sample will be used. However, I'm not going to use our kits directly but rather the kit I've already partially reconstructed for my grandmother Helen, I'm gonna use instead as a proxy, uh, as it comprises all of the DNA my brother and I inherited from her, uh, isolated in a single ancestry kit, representing about 38% of the coverage of her uh, genome. Using that kit, likely be more accurate because uh, the kit's a phase kit. So how does the Lazarus tool work? Essentially, you feed it input, two sets of kits. The first set, uh, labeled as Group 1 in the tool, I like to call the insider, the insiders. These are all the descendants of the target of the reconstruction. Uh, you know, here the target is Aneda. The second group, Group 2, I call the outsiders, and they're genetic relatives of the target. They have to be actual genetic relatives of any kind, cousins, nephews, nieces, uncles, aunts, whatever. So let's categorize our DNA resources into inside and outside kits. On the inside are Anita's daughter and granddaughter, cousins one and cousin two. On the outside will be the descendants of Anita's sisters, Sally and Helen, namely Richard, Uncle Michael, myself, my brother. And again, we'll be using Helen's reconstruction as a proxy for my brother and I. And as Helen is Anita's sister, not, not her descendant, she goes on the outside. So we could fill out the data input form for Lazarus tool using just these kit numbers. And you get a pretty good reconstruction given the amount of uh, relatives and how closely related they are to the target. But we'd be failing to utilize the biggest DNA resource available to, to us at a Jed match. And that would be the thousands of kits in uh, the database that happen to be Nada's cousins. So in Facebook DNA groups, uh, which I actively uh, participate in day after day, I see complaints that people can't get any answers and they aren't learning anything about their family because all their matches have no trees or their trees are private or where we're going today, you don't need trees. So I don't care if none of Aunt Nita's cousins upload a tree ever. 
we're still going to be able to do this uh, reconstruction and we're going to figure out who Nada's cousins are with the materials available to us. So now we need to get familiar with the tool that has the tortured and laborious name People Who Match One or Both of Two Kits. If you're familiar with Ancestry's Shared Matches tool, this is basically the same thing, but it allows you to uh, control the thresholds for deciding what constitutes a shared match. It also lets you do some other things like select them and do other kinds of things, but for our purposes here, it's the Shared Matches tool on Ancestry. The Lazarus tool only, and I say only, allows 99 kits in the outside group. So I'm going to raise the threshold from the default 10 centimorgans to 14 centimorgans so that we can prioritize which ones we want to put on the outside because we're going to use the shared matches of our known resources to generate cousins of Aunt Nada to put on the outside of the kit. Also, if you set the threshold too low, you're going to end up with some coincidental matches on different sides of the family and not through Nada. So we want to avoid that wherever possible. So we're going to compile lists first of uh, shared matches between Cousin 1 and each of the primary outside kits. That would be Michael, Richard, and uh, Grandma Helen 2.0. Then we're going to do the same thing with Cousin 2 and get the list of lists of uh, shared matches between Cousin 2 and each of the other three uh, outside kits, the descendants of uh, Helen and Sally. After uh, we've compiled, uh, compiled individual lists for each person, we can go through each individual list and if we see multiple kits with the same email uh, and it's apparent that they share the same segment we can uh, get rid of some of the duplicates even if they have different kit numbers. Sometimes people upload uh, from multiple testing companies or they might upload their uh, uh, their daughter or son and it won't add anything to the, uh, to the analysis if it's the same segment. So if you see the same, same uh, email address and it's right next to each other you probably want to uh, delete all but the top one. But if they're separate, it might it might be like me, I've tested people on all sides of my family and uh, it might be two completely different matches. But if they're right on top of each other and it's clearly the same segment, get rid of some duplicates because you only have 99 slots and uh, we want to prioritize. Then I'm going to take the lists and copy and paste them all into one column in Excel and uh, sort them by kit number and look for duplicates because since we're all related we're gonna have a lot of shared matches between different groupings that we did to create generate these uh, shared matches and we're not gonna put enter the same kit twice so now let's actually use the Lazarus tool let's go in it's a bit tedious to enter all the kit numbers in the data input screen but uh, cut and paste is your friend it's worth the 10 minutes of effort um, this is really a valuable tool the inside kits are cousins one and two that's it for this example. Uh, you don't need more than one. You could, As long as you have one inside kit and at least one outside kit, this, this tool will work. But here we've got the inside cousins one and two. And the outside kits are Michael, Richard, uh, Grandma Helen lives, and each of the resulting kits from the shared matches tool that we uh, went through this exercise with. Sorry, the people who match one or both of two kits tool. We use the default settings in the Lazarus uh, tool, except we're not going to be doing a trial run. We've got 79 kits on the outside in, in this example, so let's generate a real kit that can be used in all the one-to-many tools. There shouldn't be any problem meeting the threshold for that with the amount of kits that we have here and the amount of close relatives. Okay, go, generate kit. The threshold GEDmatch imposes to create a full-fledged approved LL as opposed to LX Lazarus kit that can be used in every single tool on GEDmatch, uh, including the one-to-many. Uh, it's, it's a threshold of 1,500 uh, centimorgans. And we blew it out of the water with 21, 27.9 centimorgans of output. Now that's not enough to uh, clone on Nada, Jurassic Park style, as the name of the Lazarus tool might suggest. But that's about 28% of her genome in terms of coverage. If Aunt Nada were alive today to take the test, she'd have three times as many cousin matches. But it's enough, more than enough, to fill the first page, the GEDmatch uh, 2000 cousins page. So, um, just like a real kit, we'll have to wait uh, an average of about 12 hours and uh, before we can compare the kit to the database for the one-to-many tools. We could try out some of the one-to-one -to -one tools to make sure it worked in the meantime. Remember, if you don't click the box with the 
full processing settings checked, you'll wait forever and this kit will never be processed. You don't want to do the trial run. Now there's no reason to uh, stop with Aunt Ada. We can reconstruct Aunt Sally the same exact way using the same resources that we have here. Um, and I'll let you try that at home if you want or try this at home with your own relatives. And uh, once I have all three sisters uh, reconstructed, I already have Helen, uh, I'm going to work my way outward to some of the uh, other more distant ancestors. I might need some of the other tools to accomplish that and uh, some other techniques and we'll uh, maybe do that in other episodes. Any questions or comments, drop them below. You can also click subscribe if you want to uh, see more of these videos. Click the bell uh, right next to the subscribe if you want to receive email notifications when I post another episode. And uh, go try this out yourself.